everybody welcome to my channel i am Raphael, and i'm here to review season three episode six of the real housewives whose husband might be broke in the future ultimate girls trip thailand we start the episode off a couple of hours after giselle has lost her mind looking around the whole entire villa and accusing everyone and everything of stealing her tequila bottle so they're all getting ready for this white party that marisol is throwing it's a cocky and dinner party so they're going to be making drinks and eating dinner heather she bumps into portia and she whispers to her do you want some casa azul tequila i put it underneath whitney's bed but i could go take some out if you want some hinting at that she's the one that took giselle's missing bottle so portia's looking at her like wait what but then heather was just like oh no 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 i'm just kidding i'm just playing it's just a joke or am i <laughs> Because Portia, you know she was about to storm over to Giselle's room like, about to throw Heather underneath the bus again. <laughs> So they all get together and Pepsi, he does not seem too happy or bubbly like how we usually see him. So he tells them, um, can all of you take a seat on the couch? I need to tell you something. And I'm like, uh oh, they're in trouble. <laughs> So he starts off by saying, you know, the behavior that I experienced from all of you earlier at lunch, I was very disappointed. Like all of you were screaming at each other and calling each other's name and just being real rude. And for what? Like all of the yelling and stuff. And then two seconds later, you were all hugging each other. I love you. I this, I that, blah, 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 being fake. And I don't appreciate that. I am not a fake. Pepsi is not a fake person. I love all of you and I want to make all of you happy, but I just don't appreciate all of you acting like this. Now, do I make myself clear? I don't want to see that behavior moving forward to the end of this season do i make myself clear and if i was them and if i was sitting on the couch i would have been looking at him like uh -uh, well okay daddy tell me how much more of a bad girl i've been i kind of like that <laughs> Candace speaks up and she apologizes for yelling earlier because her and giselle had gotten into it and then giselle you know, as if we already didn't see this trash ass behavior from her last episode, she whispers over to Portia, uh, I'm not apologizing to Pepsi. Like, who is Pepsi? He doesn't even own this villa. Like, I'm not apologizing for what? Like, I didn't do anything. And I'm like, of course, Giselle, of course you didn't do anything. Of course you're not apologizing. You don't apologize on your own show. So why do I expect anything from her on this one? Let alone to at least have some type of respect for Pepsi. Like, okay, yeah, he may not own the villa. I don't know if he does or doesn't, but at least he's catering to all eight of you the least that you can do is try to say if i upset you this one time by getting into it with candace and yelling and not even just yelling at pepsi but yelling at the producers the cameramen everybody on this show that was behind the scenes you owe all of them an apology too giselle because your behavior last episode was crazy but she goes on to say like no i'm not doing that that's that leah she starts off to give her apologies to pepsi by saying you know what pepsi you know from the very bottom of my heart you know even though i haven't really been there for the activities i just want to say that I i'm sorry pepsi Pepsi, and I take full responsibility if I upset you or anything. I don't want you being upset with me. Portia just cut her off mid-sentence. <laughs> It took Marisol to tell Portia, um, Portia, Leah is talking, Leah is talking. Portia was just like, um, wait, what? Wait, who? who? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Leah. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> so disrespectful. I feel like Portia knew that Leah was talking and she just doesn't like her. So she wants to, you know, be petty or whatever. They move over to the dining area to make drinks with this bartender. Their first drink is called a stiff cock. Sounds like my new stripper name. <laughs> But Leah, she's telling Marisol, 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 where do I go? Because I can't drink alcohol. And even though I'm not too fond of Leah being on the show, I feel like nobody, specifically Marisol, has taken her sobriety seriously at all. In the confessional, Marisol says, well, she wouldn't be poor Leah. If she would just take a drink, she would down it and have fun with us. And I'm like, no, Marisol, it doesn't work like that. Sometimes things like that could be damaging to people and their lives. And that's what she's been trying to explain, but it feels like nobody listens. They like the first drink, so they move on to the next one, which is called a porn star. And I'm like, who's with these names? You know, like, what happened to the classy names for drinks? You know, like, the reception lady, the teacher, the librarian, the mailman. You know, give us some classy names for these drinks. But no, in order to get a drink, you have to order, um, can I get the spit in my mouth and slap my ass really hard, please? No ice, though. No no ice, thank you. <laughs> then Pepsi starts trying it with them by asking them, oh, who's gonna be my porn star? And I'm like, sir, didn't you just tell us last episode that you have four wives, now you want a fifth one? Like, what's going on? And then of course, Giselle, she has to volunteer and she says, oh, me, 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 I'm down. And Giselle, Giselle, I'm telling you now, if The Real Housewives, when The Real Housewives of Potomac season eight comes back around, I better not, again, hear me out again, I better not see Pepsi on that season and he's gonna be your storyline and all of a sudden you two are dating. I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> 
Candace also tells Heather that she'll be good on OnlyFans because of her ass. Heather agrees and says, yeah, my ass could smash a watermelon to pieces. And I'm like, that's very specific, but okay. And, you know, speaking of OnlyFans, you know, let's talk about that for a second because I've seen so many people online buying houses, condos, cars, simply just from OnlyFans money. And I have to think, like, is the money really that much? Like, is it a lot? Like, you know... Meanwhile, some of us, we're, we're just sucking dick for free with no good morning message the following day. <laughs> Everybody sits down to have dinner and they're all enjoying the food, enjoying each other's company. They're all talking. Everything is good, right? Until Giselle, of course. She tells Marisol, Marisol, I know that this is your dinner, but do you think that I could just say something really quick? And I just wish that Marisol would have told Giselle, uh, no, now keep eating your food. So anyway, Alexia, do you think that Adriana is going to come back for the next season of The Real Housewives of Miami? <laughs> Because every time Giselle says, can I just say something, you know is going to be followed by some bullshit. And that's exactly what happened. And like Giselle, Giselle just cannot control herself from being a producer. Like every single moment has to be calculated. Like I promise you, Giselle, this whole show could be fun and it could still be worth watching without the produced drama that you continue trying to do every single episode. But of course, she tells Portia and Leah. Leah was actually saying that you hate her, Portia, and maybe you two should talk it out right now. And I'm like... Of course. So Leah, she tells Portia, um, Portia, I don't really care about the whole Instagram tag. That doesn't really bother me. What bothers me is that, you know, you're moving funny with me now. All of a sudden, I feel like you don't really like me. You don't really want to talk to me. You don't really want to give me a chance or anything. And I thought that, you know, we had a good relationship because at the elephant retreat, you know, Leah, she talked about her time with her grandma and everything and that whole experience. And Portia has said, oh, it's okay. We're all here for you. This is like a sisterhood. It's an open space for everybody to just express themselves. But now, obviously, Portia doesn't like her and i mean i could kind of see her point but at the same time when did when was it that leah said that her the whole alexia story was boring was that before or after because if it's before then maybe she has a point portia she didn't care to explain herself so she said um you know what leah instead of poor leah i'm gonna say bye leah bye leah she's looking at portia like uh wait what's going on but she responded and she said okay bye portia bye so portia she continued on by saying Bye, Leah. Bye. Leah, she kept going. Bye, Portia. Bye, Portia. Honestly, if I was Leah, I would have told Portia. Oh, that's why Candace actually has her journalism degree. Anyways, <laughs> you know Portia would have been pissed. But then Portia, this is where she rubbed me the wrong way because it reminded me of how Nene leaks was acting the very last couple of seasons of her show. She starts telling Leah, you're just upset because you haven't been a part of any of the activities and now you want your I was there moment. You want that with me, with the housewife version of Portia. And I'm not gonna go back and forth with you. You're gonna have to earn your check differently. And I'm like, Portia, what? Like her head is so far up her own ass and I'm not even fond of Leah, like I said, but I don't think that she's trying to use Portia or anybody on the show as a moment to try to get a moment or earn her check, like, what? Like, and again, it reminds me of what Nini said at that one reunion, I believe, where she said, oh, you just wanna argue with the queen. You just wanna argue with the queen because you want a spot on this show. You need a storyline, so-and-so. That's exactly what Nini said, and that's exactly what Portia is saying, and it was pretty disappointing and pretty cringy. I'm like, Portia? Even Candace was laughing at her when she said, oh, you just want your I was there moment. Like, who even thinks that, Portia? But regardless, they both agreed, I don't like you, I don't like you, we don't like each other, and that's that. Alexia, she jumped in to tell Leah, Leah, a veces no vamos a ser amigas todo el tiempo. And that's a completely fine, bro. You have to understand we're not all going to like each other. So then Portia puts Heather on blast by asking her, who do you not get along with well within this group? And you know, the second that she asked her that, Heather's whole entire night went down the toilet. <laughs> She was probably sitting there shaking with diarrhea, looking at Portia like, what, what are you talking about? I, 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 li I like everybody here at the table. Hey, just uh, I like everybody at the table. <laughs> Meanwhile, Candace at the end of the table, she's whispering over to Leah. Leah, she was talking a lot of shit about Giselle in the Sprinter van, and I want to see if she actually says it to her face. Let's see. <laughs> So then Heather, she actually, you know, she did say what she was saying in the van, but she didn't say it with the same oomph, with the same energy that she had in the van to Giselle's face. She was just like, um, um, so Giselle, you know, I, I, I did have an issue with you, um, 
you know, with you, I love your fashions. Um, I, you know, I did have an issue with you um, and how you were accusing me of being a liar and stuff. You're the queen of Potomac, by the way. But I did have an issue with you and accusing me of, you know, not being a trustworthy person and everything. I love your shoes. Um, but yeah, I just, I, do, I don't appreciate that. And I, I was ready to flip the table, but only a little bit, but not really, not not too much. You know what I'm saying? I really love you, you know, but, but that's it. <laughs> I'm like, Heather, please, like, save it. If, that, if that's how you're going to say it to her face, save it. Giselle's looking at her like, I can't trust you because of the whole Jen Shaw situation. Which, to Giselle's point, I understand because, honestly, I wouldn't trust any of the Salt Lake City housewives either. I mean, they're all pretty sketchy. <laughs> Maybe Meredith, but even then. But then Heather was just like, well, you know, I came onto the show wanting to be liked and I wanted to be a pick me. I wanted everybody to pick me. And I'm like, oh no, Heather, like, Heather, no, like, she turned into Meredith Grey from Grey's Anatomy. Pick me, love me, choose me. <laughs> but, but Giselle said no. <laughs> so Giselle was just like, but why though? Like, why are you coming onto the show like that? Heather was just like, look, I'm trying to be real with you. I'm trying to be honest. And at least she is honest about it. I mean, it may, it may not be a good quality or a trait, you know, in a person, but at least she's admitting it that, yeah, that's what that was her whole purpose on the show. Giselle was just like, well, you know what? We still have two more days on this trip. Let's try to rekindle some type of friendship. And I'm looking at Heather like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> And Whitney's looking over at Heather like the proud backstabbing cousin that she is. And she tells her, um, Heather, I'm really proud of you for actually standing up to Giselle and telling her how you really feel instead of keeping it on the inside. I always watch my morning TV shows, you know, Barney. And Barney's always told me that I need to express myself and tell people about my emotions. So I'm proud of you, Heather. I hope that me and you could take down Lisa Barlow together on season four. So then the dinner is over. Everybody gets up. We see Whitney and Heather. They take it out to the field right next to the pool. They both start hugging and saying I'm sorry to each other. It was pretty cute until it started raining. I'm thinking, wait a minute. I think that that's bad luck. So I don't think that this relationship is going to continue any further. <laughs> But they jump into the pool behind them with their clothes on and the microphone strapped to their backs. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm surprised neither one of them got electrocuted. I mean, can you imagine if they touched the water and Whitney was just like, ugh. <laughs> I mean, that's not funny, but I mean, it is dangerous. And Marisol was just like, oh no, they jumped in there with their microphones attached to them. And honestly, if I was Peacock, I would have told them, um, I'm sorry, but I'm deducting this from your pay. Like, you need to pay for this. <laughs> But Pepsi, he goes over there to help them out. But then they hop back in without their clothes. They're completely naked. Candace, Alexia, and Marisol, they also join them. So then after that, they take it to the confessional room. They're sitting on like this bench. And Heather, she's right in the middle. She's completely naked. And she's like ripping on her boob. I'm not sure what she was doing. Then she gets up. She turns around. And you see her entire ass. And I'm like, wow. You know, housewives gone wild. I'm pretty sure that the Mormon people are not going to like this, Heather. <laughs> The following morning, we see everybody getting ready for the temple. Whitney, she's meeting up with Alexia and Marisol to ask them for help for her activity later on tonight. So she tells them, um, okay, so before anything, I don't want you guys thinking that I'm trying to be inappropriate or disrespectful, but when I talk to people and I'm done talking, I usually tell them to put a dick in their mouth and they're just looking at her like, what? <laughs> Like, it is way too early. I'm not even done with my morning coffee. And you want to be talking about dick? Like, what? <laughs> Everyone else reunites to have some breakfast. But then Leah, she starts not feeling well. So she gets up. She starts running towards her room, towards her bathroom, in an attempt to throw up. But nothing is coming out. So everybody else is looking around at the table like, wait, what just happened to Leah? Back in her room, they're trying to lay her down. She's not feeling well. And it's pretty unfortunate. I mean, from day one all the way to now, she has not been feeling well at all. So she's like, wait, no, I'm a little bit more concerned. I need to go to a hospital. And that's that. And everybody else at the table is like, wait, this is her activity day. She's supposed to be leading this. Is she not going to come? She's not going to go. And again, like I said, it sucks because she's been sick every single day. She has not had a good day the entire time that she's been here. And now she's going to the hospital. Like they get the activity on the go. And at the temple, they have to wish something positive on the monks. So one by one, they all start wishing them love, peace, and happiness and travel. Giselle, she gets up there and for a second, I really, really thought she was going to say, I wish you nothing but drama. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, I wouldn't put it past her, but it was a cute activity, I guess. Pepsi, who's also with them, he tells them, oh, come out here and pick out a piece of paper at random, and I'll tell you how it represents your future. So they all get their papers, they all go outside, he starts off with Giselle. Giselle, he's looking at her paper like, um, yikes, you, you sure you don't want to go get another one? <laughs> So he tells her, your paper shows that whatever husband or boyfriend you have in the future will always be broke. They won't ever have money. And can you imagine being on vacation and getting these type of news? Like the whole trip is over. <laughs> and I'm looking at Pepsi like, hmm, he must be team Karen Huger on the low. <laughs> But I don't know. I mean, that's pretty scary. And then it also has me thinking, Giselle is supposedly dating that guy from Summer House. I wonder how much money he has. But for the most part, everybody else, they all got good fortunes until we got Portia. Portia got a questionable one. He goes up to her and he tells her, um, it says that you're going to be in drama with a lesbian. The first thing that popped into my mind was the whole situation between her, Candy, and Marlo. You know, that whole fiasco. And how when Candy met up with Portia... Candy told her, Um, you told me that you wanted to eat my pussy till I came. <laughs> I'm like, could that be a thing in the future? Like, are they rehashing that whole thing out? Who knows? But Portia, Portia, <laughs> Portia looks at Pepsi and she says, Mm hmm. Okay, I, I received that. <laughs> like, no, don't receive it. Throw it away. Like, that's not good, Portia. <laughs> They get back to the villa to get ready for Whitney's tantric dinner that she's having. And I had to Google what the word tantric means. It means to be connected spiritually, physically, and sexually. So they all start coming down to the dinner table one by one. Whitney, Portia, and Giselle have my favorite looks of the night. Yes, I said Giselle. <laughs> So they're looking at the menus and everything is spelled out in a way that's alluding to something sexual. Like one of the items, it was called my kume, but it's really my cum. So the chef, he's talking to all of them and telling them how you're supposed to feel as you're eating them, how you're supposed to, you know, connect with it spiritually and physically in your mouth. And then as soon as he walks away for a split second, what do they ask each other? Do you think that the chef has a big dick? <laughs> like what i'm like excuse me you all should be asking questions about the food like what kind of things are inside it or whatever but no we're talking about the chef's penis giselle she lets us know that she like she already lets us know on her show that she likes a big penis but here she says uh no 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 if i can't wrap both my hands around it i don't want it i'm like wow giselle i'm like heather heather was just like no absolutely not i am terrified of big penises i do not want anything huge i get scared <laughs> I'm like, oh, Heather, stop. And then Whitney, Whitney was just like, um, well, for me, I don't really care about that. Um, as long as you know how to use your nose. And everybody's looking at her like, your, your nose? Like, what? <laughs> Now, I know exactly what she's talking about because of the rapper Trina. She said it in one of her songs. Come a little closer. I want to fuck your nose. And I feel like, yeah, well, you know, I don't need to explain it. If you know, you know. <laughs> Whitney starts rehashing the scene between her and her husband on season two of her show when they were both in their bathing suits and they were... And they were both just playing around together in the in the paint and, you know, touching each other. And then he slapped her ass and she was moaning. You know, but she said because of that whole scene specifically that her husband lost his job because she's a public figure and she can't be in the public eye. So because of that, they fired him, allegedly. Mm -hmm. So Whitney, she actually revealed to us the same day that they fired him, she was actually going to quit The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, which I don't know why she would do that in the first place. What a foolish move because then he'll have no job, you have no job, and what happens then? She also lets us know that her husband told her, oh no, you're not allowed to quit. You promised me that you were going to retire me, so you still need to work. Which I don't think I've ever heard either one of them mention this stipulation in their marriage on their show. Not that I can remember, so that's a little sketchy. But Whitney, she lets us know that now she's making double what he was making at his previous job. So I guess it doesn't matter. Then Pepsi tells them that they got a stripper pole. And you know I love a good pole dance. And so does Whitney. So they circle around the pole. They have people there on helping them on how to use it properly. I was very impressed with Marisol and Giselle. How they were both spinning around in slow motion looking like rotisserie chicken. But they were doing it properly, so kudos to them. <laughs> 
And of course, Whitney, she had to show off and show off every single move that she has, right? She was upside down, she was sideways, she was down on a split. She did every single move from the book, How to Get a Man in Two Seconds. <laughs> So that Alexia, she had the nerves and the audacity in her confessional to say, well, I mean, it's pretty impressive, I guess. But at the same time, I'm thinking about her children. And I'm looking at Alexia like, you shouldn't be worried about her kids. You should be worried about your son, Peter, and his trash ass behavior and what he's doing. That's what you should be focusing on. But okay, Alexia, so the night is over. Everybody's falling asleep except Candace and Whitney. They both put on their bathing suits and meet in the confessional to do what? To smoke a joint. So after that, Candace is sleepy. So she tells Whitney, uh, no, I'm not taking any more tequila shots or whatever. I'm going to sleep. But does Whitney want to go to sleep? No, she wants to continue the fun. So she goes goes into the kitchen to look for some food. She sees Portia's KFC box. She starts eating everything. And I wonder if this is gonna be an issue. Like, oh, who ate my food without my permission? We'll find out. But she goes outside by the pool. She's trying to get on the floaty. She's trying to catch her balance, but nope. She flips over and she lands in the water. <laughs> But Whitney does seem like a good time, though. I mean, she does seem fun, but that was that, and that was the episode. We're nearing the finale, I guess. I think that we have maybe one or two more episodes, and then we're done, so that's bittersweet. But let me know what you all thought about this episode down in the comments. Bye, everybody. Mwah.